Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on camera tracking in Blender. Uh, Google Summer of Code is all done now and the students have put their pencils down and one of the great features we got this summer was camera tracking. Now this hasn't been put into the main version of Blender yet. Uh, it, that probably won't happen until version 2.61 or 2.62 are released. Uh, some of the features from Summer of Code have been added into the main version and they're going to be in there in 2.6 but uh, I don't believe camera tracking is one of them but it should be soon so uh, so look forward to that so for right now the best way to or the easiest way for most people to get a hold of these features is to go to graphicall.org where they have all these custom builds of blender and then uh, on the right here we have a filter for summer of code we'll just go through there and we see all these branches related to the Google summer of code this year and you're gonna want one of the tomato branch for your operating system so here's one for Windows 64-bit um, so yeah just find one of the as recent a one as you can you can see the build number over here so just find one that's as recent as you can um, of the tomato branch for your operating system and then uh, fire it up. So here we are and we see that it looks pretty much like uh, like normal blender um, but the the new uh, mode that we have is the movie clip editor and that's where we're going to want to start with this. So uh, to the reason we want to do camera tracking I should probably explain is um, blender essentially we can create these virtual objects like this cube here and then we can use our virtual camera um, to take pictures of these objects like so you already knew that right but what if you wanted to make it look like this cube was part of a real video was actually in a scene that you filmed with your camera your real camera in the real world well one of the things you would need to consider is that the virtual camera here needs to move exactly the same way as uh, the real camera did in order for the renders to line up when you composite them together and that's what camera tracking will help you do so pull up the movie clip editor and down here choose open browse and find your clip I'm just going to use this one here of my kitchen table I threw some objects across the, the table to uh, to give us points to track and I'll explain that in a minute these little paper things I cut those out I found those on uh, Google images just doing a search for camera tracking markers and I found a whole sheet of these that I cut out and they can really help of course you'll need to find a way to erase them out of the final footage if you're gonna do this for production but you don't really even need them I've done without them before and it's it's fine they're just helpful little things to throw in there if you need some more information. So we have our video here in the movie clip editor and we can scrub along in the timeline here and see it. Now one of the first things to note is this video isn't exactly 250 frames long um, but that's what Blender is set to by default so we need to find how long it is and I'll just scrub here alright it stops moving at about frame 269 so this video is 269 frames long and I happen to know that it's 720p so I'm just going to choose that preset here and the frame rate is 29.97 that'll just help you for compositing later alright so we're ready to start tracking I'm going to go up here to marker and choose add marker and move and we now have this little square attached to our cursor now we want to put that on some kind of noticeable object some some kind of uh, consistent feature with a lot of contrast in the video I think the uh, the end of this twist tie will work pretty well actually and uh, after clicking you can move it by pressing G to grab and move it around just like other objects in blender so I'm gonna put it right there of course uh, when I scrubbed along I started at the I'm now at the end frame of the video and I want to be at the beginning so shift left arrow will put us back at the beginning and now I'll just G to grab and put that back where it goes and now we can go over here to track and choose track forward and it'll start tracking that uh, object and you see we only made it 47 frames here 
before it lost the track. Uh, it just wasn't able to tell that those pixels were the same as before. So one thing I found is here on the right under the tracking settings we have two different algorithms for tracking KLT and SAD and I've had a lot more success with SAD than KLT so I'm going to use that. I'm just going to go back to the beginning here and retrack this and there seems to be some slipping but it made it all the way through. Actually the slipping wasn't that bad. And down here this uh, this little bar at the bottom of the movie clip editor shows us in in this very light blue, I don't know if you can see it there, but that shows us which frames of the video are cached into memory and the yellow shows you which frames have been tracked for this marker. So we've got them all, that's great. This marker is done. Now we need 10 of these markers in order to solve our camera. Um, so let's add another one. I'm going to put it here on this corner of the sticky notes and try tracking that. And it, we lost it at frame 228. Now if you lose it, all hope is not lost. It will stop the animation right there where you lost it. And you can just press G to grab and reset it where it's supposed to be and keep tracking and that will fix it. So uh, don't give up on a on a marker just because uh, you might have it might lose it at one point. You can still set it up pretty well. All right, so going well so far. Shift left arrow to put it back at the beginning, and I'm going to put one there on those napkins. Let's track that through a corner like that, especially where these napkins are so bright colored and the ground beneath them is so dull. That's a really good sort of spot to track. I'm going to add another one here and put it on this corner of the napkins. Might as well concentrate on this area while we're over here. And that also tracked all the way through without losing it at all. Beautiful. I'm going to track this little feature on this chair. And that works well until... Oops, we lost it. Um, but I'll just grab with G and set it back on there. And keep tracking and it followed it all the way through. Alright, so we're halfway there. Shift left arrow back to the beginning. I'm going to try... Uh, now, one thing to keep in mind with, with trackers here is um, you want to have a good variety of them within your scene because the, uh, the algorithm is going to use the positions of these markers to figure out the three-dimensional position of the camera. So you want the markers to be spaced throughout the scene pretty variedly so that you can get a good representation of the of the camera. So you want some on the right and some on the left, some in the foreground, some in the background, some sort of on the ground plane, some up above it uh, in order to get the best possible track. So I'm going to go over here to the left, put one on this little pin here, track that forward my uh, one year of service pin from Bob Evans which is my day job. Now on this bike helmet um, we'll put one right there and alright we lost it at 250 well that that's fine because we'll just put it back where it goes and there we go the last 19 frames no problem probably also put one right here on this feature of the bike helmet that looks pretty good oh yeah no slipping the marker just stays right where it goes now I'm gonna use some of my little my wonderful little paper markers here try tracking that one beautiful Try tracking this one too. See how all that goes. All right, all the way through. Okay, maybe also this corner of the napkins would be good. Just as many as you can do will really help your scene come out the best. I'm going to try to do the tips of these scissors here. Let's track that. 
and oh we lost it so I'll move it back all right now I think I'm gonna try doing this back corner of the post-it notes also so let's track that and oh all right so this is what I'm talking about when I said we can have slipping because because this is just the sort of plain very bright yellow color the tracker got confused and it thought that these pixels here were the same as these ones up here so if we just scrub back to the point when it got lost let's try well huh. yeah it got lost right about there so let's move it back and see if it figures it out and what do you know it figured it out pretty well so we can watch our scene here and see what's going on yeah alright so we've got what about 13 markers there that should be pretty good let's uh... I'm gonna put one more here on the bike helmet right up here and uh, I'm zooming in and zooming out just with the scroll wheel and then I'm moving around by holding down the middle mouse button which is also the scroll wheel but clicking on it and then dragging with that and that's how you move around in the movie clip editor very similar to the rest of blender and that tracked beautifully also okay so we've got about 14 if, if I'm counting correctly here well, let's see four six eight ten twelve fourteen yep we have fourteen markers here that should be plenty so now we just need to go to the 3d view and set up our scene a little bit so I'm gonna get out of camera view here I'm gonna delete this cube and I'm gonna clear the camera's location with alt G and I'm gonna turn on screencast keys so you can see the keys I'm pressing and alt R to clear its uh, rotation and so now the camera is centered and pointing down and we're going to go to the constraints and add a camera solver constraint which is uh, one of the new features added as part of tomato as part of the camera tracking work so now back in the movie clip editor we're ready to do a camera solve which is in this menu here solving what we need to do is find a range of frames where there's a lot of rotation in the camera some different angles and I think from about here at about frame 160 to the end is our best bet in fact maybe till about 240 so we're gonna set keyframe 1 to 160 and keyframe 2 to 240 and those are the the keyframes that uh, the, the solver is gonna use to figure out the position of our camera now we need to do one more thing over here on the right we need I'm gonna minimize tracking settings and go into camera data now we need to give it the sensor size of the lens or not of the lens but of the sensor in our camera and that's something you're just gonna have to google for yourself I, uh, I mine is a Canon SX 130 IS and a little bit of googling revealed that that has a sensor size of 7.7 .7 millimeters so you'll just have to find that I recommend googling for the model number of whatever camera you have and uh, if you don't know uh, well I, I'm not exactly it's pretty vital information so you really need to find out as best you can because the track really doesn't work without it so we'll just set that and then we're ready to click solve camera and after a brief moment it has uh, done the calculations and if we go back to the 3d view we see we now have these dots here and these are called bundles um, but they're there's just one for every marker that we had in the video clip editor so now to see what's going on better I'm going to press 0 on the numpad key to uh, to, to go into camera view and uh, and then I'm going to go to background images and check that and do add image change that to movie and pick our clip I'm going to set it to just camera view so we only see it from the camera's viewpoint and now if we press alt a and watch our animation we see that those bundles 
line up perfectly with um, the markers with the spots in the video alright escape to stop the animation now our scene still needs a little bit of setup here so I'm gonna jump back to the movie clip editor oh pardon me that would be my uh, my chat program I'll just edit that out there I'm gonna go to the movie clip editor now and uh, what we need to do is choose a marker to be our point of origin so imagine if the camera was on sort of a turntable where would the center of that turntable be what marker is the camera rotating around I think it's pretty close to this one right here because as you can see that marker doesn't really move within the frame of the video very much at all across the course of the animation so it's kinda like the cameras rotating around that so that's a good one to use I'm gonna go down to track and choose set origin and then go to 3d view and now it's moved that bundle to the center right there which is perfect now we're gonna change into 3d cursor rotation from right here and uh, press R to rotate and we're going to try to line up you can tell alright let me slow down here if we go into camera view let's uh, select some of these markers which are pretty much on the level of the table alright so these ones are all pretty much level with the table now if we look at that from the side view we see that those kind of form a line like that and that's uh, that's our tabletop now we're gonna try to line that up as best as we can with our 3d grid here so that anything that's placed flat on the 3d grid will appear to be placed flat on the table hopefully that will make sense as we go on so I'm just gonna rotate it till those are as level together as possible and I'm gonna rotate and just rotate a bit and I'm gonna look at it from the front view also and try to make them line up as best I can that way too okay probably raise that up a little bit now also what can be helpful is to go into uh, the display panel on the left on the right here and change the bundle type to plane axes and then you can see the center of where they are a lot better so I'm just gonna move it so the two bottom ones are lined up perfectly like that now if we look the bundles oops the uh, the bundles all still line up perfectly with the camera view but now the 3d plane also appears to line up pretty well uh, with our scene so that's about all we need for scene setup so now I'm just gonna add an object that's gonna be in there so shift a mesh I'm just gonna add a cube and first thing I'm gonna do is uh, move it up on the z-axis G and then Z and then typing the number one and that'll put it flat on the floor like that and then I'm going to scale it down and I did that in edit mode which put the object origin at the bottom you go into edit mode with tab and you get out of it with tab also and then I'm going to press S to scale it down and it scales down while staying lined up on the floor I'm going to look at it from camera view that looks about the right size and now I want to move it over to here oops we can now see it's gone under our grid like if I put it there and we look from side view yeah it's it's underneath the grid well that's that's not what we want so I'm gonna put it back at the center and look at it from camera view well if we do grab and then shift Z we can move it on the axis except for the Z on the X and Y and that'll keep it lined up with the floor so now I'll just put it, I think I want to put it right about here. Okay, now if we just play back the animation with Alt-A, you can see the cube lines up pretty much perfectly with our scene there. Okay, um, now if we go ahead and render that, well, we have a really lovely cube, but uh, we don't really have, it, it's not part of our scene. Well, that's because we need to do some compositing so let's go up to our scene layout and choose compositing tell it to use nodes I'm gonna move the render layer over shift A input movie clip and then I'm gonna choose the clip from there shift A color 
alpha over. If I drag that node over this wire, it will connect it there. But I want this wire on the bottom. Connect this one in here. And now if we look at our render result down here, we see, all right, our cube is in the scene. But it doesn't really fit, does it? Uh, and there's a couple reasons. One, the uh, color is really dark compared to everything else, especially on this side, this side of the cube that's facing us. And secondly, it doesn't have any shadow. So it looks like it could just be floating there. So we're going to fix that. Um, I'm going to go back to default view. And I'm going to add a plane. I'm going to go into edit mode and scale that plane up really big. Uh, big enough so it should cover the whole shadow that the cube should be leaving. And then uh, tab out of edit mode and I'm going to do some fancy business in this uh, plane's material settings. Now we can see this, this plane and our grid don't really seem to be lining up that well at all with the table with the lines of the table which I think might uh, might cause some problems so I'm gonna try to line those up a little bit better here so um, first I'm gonna go into object mode on the plane and change it change its display type to wire so that it, it doesn't block so much and then I'm just gonna grab one of these bundles and we're gonna try rotating it again Try rotating it on the X. Well, that looks a little better. That looks a lot better, actually. Because, see, now these lines match up a lot better with uh, the actual direction of the table. But I'm not sure. I'm going to try some Z also. All right. Well, let's press A, Alt A to watch the animation again. And all we're really worried about is that this cube looks like it's part of the scene. So as long as we get that, maybe a little less on the X again. And just sort of eyeballing it. This isn't, maybe someday we'll have some tools to do this all much more exactly. Um, and if you put in a lot more markers, you might be able to identify it. Maybe if you did some measurements of the room, that'd be a better way. But eyeballing it works pretty well too. Okay, I think that'll be good. So now I'm going to go into the material settings for my plane here. And all I need to do is go down, oops, material settings. I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to call it table. Actually, I'm going to call it cube shadow. And then down at the bottom here, I'm going to choose the shadow panel and set shadows only. Shadows only. Now if we render that, we have this lovely shadow. Now if we look at that, um, the shadow first of all is actually lighter instead of darker, so that's a problem. And uh, secondly, we have this, uh, this sec uh, secondly it's going in the wrong direction, and thirdly there's this weird sort of l light colored halo around it. Um, so we're going to fix that, go into the render settings and go down to shading and set the alpha to pre-multiplied, and that will fix the little light colored halo. And then uh, while we're rendering now we see everything as this black screen. I'm going to change it to show the alpha so now if we render it again we see just our cube and its shadow. That's a lot better. And now that actually the shadow is a little darker. It was that halo that really messed me up. So the shadow is pretty good now. It, it needs to be a little darker though but it's still the wrong direction. So we need to do some work with our light here. I'm going to take this light and change it to a sun lamp and I'm going to clear its rotation and then rotate it. I'm going to press the comma key to switch the uh, switch the rotation to bounding box center and then I'm going to rotate it so it points at the cube well so it points at a downward angle like that and now if we see first of all we have a darker shadow and second of all it's uh, going in the right direction maybe it needs to go a little bit this way I don't know judging from these other objects it looks like it might be at a slight angle okay so that's pretty good but the uh, the side of the cube is still way too dark and the shadow is now really really too dark so 
the way to fix the uh, the side of the cube here is we're going to shift A, add a hemisphere lamp. I'm going to put that, I'm just going to move it up a little bit, but you don't actually have to move it anywhere. I'm just going to move it because I like the way it looks. And I'm going to turn down the energy to something pretty low. That should be good. Now if we render that, this side of the cube is is much brighter. So we have, that simulates the even bouncing of the light around in the room that the footage was shot, but the shadow is still too dark. So let's, uh, a quick easy fix to solve that that I found is to take the plane and in the material settings, I'm going to go up and enable transparency and I'm going to turn the alpha down a little bit. Now if we render it, our shadow is transparent again and that looks good. Now we just really have one problem remaining which is that the shadow is really crisp and it's got these sharp edges whereas the shadows in the rest of the scene like here on these pens and on this these post-it notes they're really uh, blurred so I'm going to select the sun lamp again and go down to its shadow settings and bump up the number of samples uh, to about seven and increase the soft size I'm going to put it at about five or six now if we render that we've got these nice soft shadows and yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good. So I think that's it for this tutorial. Hope you learned something. Uh, check out my website, spencerdupre.org, and uh, have a great one.